Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I am glad you're with us today. What we're talking about today, actually a fun show, all new information today. We're talking about secret messages your body is trying to tell you. The body's sending out these warning signs, and we have to be able to read them so we can understand what they are. I remember when I was studying orthopedics uh, way back when, my teacher, uh, Rick Ackerman, he said, if you don't know it exists, you can't diagnose it. So you can have certain symptoms, and you don't know what they are, so you just assume it's nothing to worry about, when in reality it could be a warning sign. So we're going to talk about some things, little symptoms, little signs that your body is sending out that could be saying, hey, something's wrong. I want you to dig a little deeper. Now, we're going to jump right into it because we've got a ton to cover here. You have a metallic taste in your mouth. Could be a sign of chronic kidney disease. So what happens is your kidneys, if they're not pr functioning properly for a long time, a substance called urea builds up in your bloodstream, and that causes a condition called u uh, uremia, which is urine, uh, uh, urea is this waste product in, in your blood. One of the primary symptoms is experiencing a metal taste. If that's your only symptom, it's almost certainly caused by something else. Now, you could uh, me metallic taste could be other things, but when you combine it with changes in urination, with back pain, then it could be a sign of kidney disease. So if you have a metallic taste in your mouth, something's wrong. And if you have urinary issues and pain around your kidney area, then you might want to consider it's a kidney issue. Now, if you have a family history of kidney problems, certainly something you want to look at. What we do is we always want to check the nerve supply to any organ, and especially kidneys. Well, not especially kidneys, uh, any organ, including kidneys. Now, when I first got into practice, I very seldom saw kidney problems. And I've been in practice 37 years, almost 38 years now. And what I've seen happen is that over time, we're seeing more and more kidney issues. And I believe a lot of this has to do with people eating a much higher protein diet. I think, in my opinion, and I don't have any documentation on this, but I find that when people eat these real high protein diets, they're more likely to have kidney issues. And so that's why I'm not a big fan of these high protein diets, because it just puts way too much stress on the kidneys. Now, if you're going to eat a high protein diet, plant protein doesn't seem to have a bad impact on the kidneys where animal protein does. So staying away from animal protein, another reason why I want you to stay away from animal proteins. It's not my favorite, and uh, I don't eat any animal proteins, haven't in 35 years. So again, metallic taste in the mouth, along with other issues, could be kidney issues. If you have a diagonal earlobe crease, you could have heart disease. So if you look at your earlobes, you have a wrinkle, kind of like a line going down the earlobe. Uh, you might want to put some extra effort into boosting your heart health. There's a lot of studies that support the association between the earlobe crease and coronary artery disease. That's according to a 2015 report in the Archives of Medical Science. So I remember reading about this years ago because my mother had the crease in her ear. Now, my mother had a split earlobe. And so we had to get her, she could only wear clip-on earrings, and so I always got a clip-on earrings. Um, so with her, it wasn't heart disease. She just had a split earlobe. But a number of studies have found that such creases were a sign of increased risk of coronary disease. 2016, uh, British Medical Journal found that those with the creases in both ears were at greater risk than those with the crease in just one ear. So again, just something to think about. So if you have the crease, especially both ears, and you have a family history of heart disease, once again, you should follow Dr. Joe's advice and stay away from the foods that increase your risk of heart disease. And those foods, conveniently, are the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. So, once again, those seven magical foods come into play for a condition. This time, heart disease. Sometimes it's cancer. Sometimes it's uh, Alzheimer's. Sometimes it's digestive issues. So, it took me a while, many, many years ago, to put together the easiest list of foods to avoid. And I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So I we narrowed it down to seven. Now there's other things. There's glutens and there's artificial. Uh, there's other uh, additives and things. But generally speaking, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener are the ones you want to avoid at all costs. They're called the seven deadly sins of nutrition. So if you have a bad diet and you have creases in your ears and or you have a family history of heart disease, it's a wake up call. It's nature smacking you in the face and saying, "Hey, pay attention." I'm giving you all these warning signs. Why are you not listening? So you should eat a good diet anyway to help prevent heart disease. But if you are at high risk of heart disease, even more reason to do that.
but there shouldn't be more reason. Just do it. Okay, it's really easy to change your diet. You have to eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds and stay away from bad foods. You have to eat anyway. You might as well eat good foods. And that's always been my philosophy. Uh, I can have a steak or I could have, a, I don't know, stir-fried veggies and quinoa. Well, stir-fried veggies and quinoa are going to be a hell of a lot more cheap, a hell of a lot cheaper than what you're doing right now, better for you, easier to prepare, and there's no downside. Because they both taste, well, I guess they taste great. I haven't had it in a while. But if you're going to eat foods, you might as well eat good foods. And if you don't know what to eat, if you go to our website, drjoe.com, just type in the words, so what can I eat in the search bar. And so what can I eat will bring you to a, a lecture that I did. And it talks about breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, parties, raising kids. Really easy, really simple. And that all the podcasts on our, our website are absolutely free. So you could listen to that. My first book I wrote was called Eating Right, is called Eating Right for the Health of It. And we talk about how to change your diet and with recipes and everything. So that's on the website too, drjoe.com. So we're talking about warning signs today, things that are in your body that are telling you that there's something wrong. If you have a lot of skin tags, my mother used to call them, well, the derogatory term for Italian warts. Um, skin tags are little benign growths on the surface of your skin. And if you have a lot of skin tags, you increase your risk of diabetes, or you're at a higher risk of diabetes. So diabetes is a condition that causes chronic high, high blood sugar levels. And the connection, scientists aren't really sure. But they found multiple studies, including one in 2007 in the International Journal of Dermatology, that found people with multiple skin tags were at higher risk of contracting type 2 diabetes. We don't know the correlation. If you have a lot of skin tags, something you might want to monitor. Once again, just giving you information. What you do with the information is totally up to you. If you have pain in your jaw, could be that your jaw is dislocated, and there's a, 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 a joint in your jaw called the temporomandibular joint, and the TMJ, the temporomandibular joint, can come out of place, and it can cause pain. But if you have aching jaw pain along with other symptoms, you might want to consider being tested for Lyme disease. Lyme disease is one of a very difficult disease to diagnose. I've seen patients with it, and it's, it's, it mimics a lot of other issues. So it's hard for us sometimes to actually pin it down. So if you're suffering from chronic pain and it, uh, that comes and goes, it could, in fact, be Lyme disease, which, of course, comes from being bit by a certain type of tick. Medical professionals may see uh, this TMJ or temporary mandibular joint as you're uh, trying to tell you uh, something that's more serious. So you should always ask about, hey, let's check for Lyme disease. But again, even if we check for Lyme disease, it's hard to sometimes diagnose it because it's well hidden. Uh, symptoms of Lyme disease include headache and muscle aches, complications of the joints, including the jaw. Uh, now, we can adjust the jaw. And I've uh, had a lot of patients come to us with jaw pain, and we can actually go in and adjust the temporomandibular joint and put that joint back in place. The tricky part about the TMJ, the temporomandibular joint, is that it has so many nerve endings in it. It has what's called proprioceptive nerve endings. Now, joints have proprioception in it, but the jaw is a super high concentration. I think, and don't quote me on this, I think it's 32 pair of proprioceptive fibers. Proprioceptive fibers are nerve fibers that tell you where you are in space. So, for example, I can close my eyes and I can touch my nose. I can reach down and touch my foot. I, can, I know where I am in space because of proprioception. The jaw has a lot of proprioceptive fibers because you can't see yourself chew. And so your body has to kind of know where your tongue is, where your cheeks are, so that you don't bite your tongue and your cheeks and your lips. So there's a lot of proprioception going on in the jaw. And so if there's damage to the jaw, there's a lot of nerve endings there that can cause pain. There's also a lot of proprioceptive fibers in your sacroiliac joint. That's your kind of around your hip area. Because we don't watch ourselves walk. We don't stare at our feet and look at the ground constantly. And so we're able to tell where we are in space because of our TMJ and our sacroiliac joint. Now, many times if I have a jaw patient come in, I check their sacroiliac joint and vice versa because the proprioceptive systems are so closely related. So jaw pain could be Lyme disease, but it also could be a proprioceptive issue. And the way we can test real simple is I have a patient stand up, 
and I wrap my arms around them, but I don't touch them. I just put my arms around them. And I'll say, okay, close your eyes and let's see if you start to sway. And if you start to sway, if you sway side to side, that's telling me it's a sacroiliac joint issue. If you sway front to back, it's a sacrooccipital issue. So there's little tests we can use to diagnose where the problem is coming from and then what we need to do to fix it. So just a little fun fact there for you. And that's, that today is just fun facts. Today's whole show is about fun facts and signs and symptoms that you may have that are telling you that there's something wrong. If you have a desire to chew ice, anybody have that? I had a secretary a while ago, and she actually got an ice machine, put it under her desk, and constantly made chunks of ice because she chewed ice all day. And I told her, I said, if you chew ice all day, you might be low in iron. And I don't know if she ever took iron supplements or not. I told her to. But if you love nothing more than chewing on an ice beverage, the ice cubes left on the bottom of your glass, it could be time to reach for iron supplements. Now, Essential Source and Super Greens, th those are the two supplements I think everybody should take anyway. But they're great sources of iron. Now, there's two types of iron. There's heme iron, H-E-M-E, -E, and non-heme iron. Non-heme iron comes from plants. Heme iron comes from blood. Hematologist, okay, blood. So if you're eating animal blood, it's a good source of iron, no doubt about it. However, it's animal blood, and the blood is a filter system. The blood filters out junk. It filters out toxins and poisons. So another reason why I don't recommend you eat animal products is you're eating the sewer system of the animal, and I don't want you doing that. So heme iron is easily absorbed. Non-heme iron is very effective as long as vitamin C is present. Now, nature has arranged that for us. So if you're going to eat cherries or if you're going to eat anything red or green is going to be high in iron. So cherries, black beans, red beans, uh, green leafy vegetables, spinach, uh, strawberries, these are all great sources of iron. And nature has already put the vitamin C in the plant. So that's why things like essential source, which is raw fruits and vegetables in a powder form, you're going to get the vitamin C along with the non-heme iron and be able to absorb it that way. So I recommend if you're going to take an iron supplement, you do a plant-based iron supplement. I am not a fan of non-organic, meaning not coming from animals or plants, uh, iron. Because many times they'll get iron supplements from iron, from, from the, the mineral that comes in the earth. And very constipating, not easy to absorb, not the best source of iron. The downside is that most iron supplements are non-organic, okay? And so I don't want you taking those. I'd rather get, you good, get a good plant-based iron supplement. You can do much better. And uh, so what happened was 2014 study published in a, a medical hypothesis found that two things are connected, this low iron and chewing on ice. Your body needs iron to carry oxygen to the brain and to your muscles, and people who are lacking iron have less oxygen in their blood, they, researchers found that if they, the chomping down on ice triggers a response in your body that sends more blood up to your brain, which can give that feeling of alertness. And so it's a warning sign telling you you're probably low in iron. So red and green leafy vegetables, like I said, uh, are great sources of iron. Figs are great sources of iron. Uh, too many figs can give you loose stools, so just be careful with that. So I'd rather see you take Super Greens and Essential Source, and then if you still need more iron, let me know. And there are other uh, companies I may recommend you to that have good sources of iron as well. If you have a gray ring around your cornea, your eye, that could uh, mean you have too high cholesterol. So the gray or the white above the cornea is known as Arcus senilis. If you have it, you, that might be a sign you need to cut back on your seven deadly sins, especially your animal fats. Arcus senilis is the most com it's common in adults, and it's a result of fatty deposits around the edge of your cornea. So in more severe cases, especially when it comes to younger people, it could be the result of high cholesterol or high triglycerides. So if you have this little arc around your cornea, it's just something to consider you might want to look into a little deeper and say, okay, maybe I need to get my cholesterol checked. Now, most people, you know, a lot of people get their blood work done on a regular basis, but a lot of people don't. So if you're not getting your blood done on a regular basis, it wouldn't hurt to just get a good across-the-board blood scan and see what's going on in there. 
And so what we're talking about today are signs and symptoms that uh, your body's sending out telling you that there's something wrong. And I don't want you ignoring these things because over time, it becomes a much more serious issue. These are early warning signs. And that when you look at these early warning signs, many times you're able to uh, dig a little deeper and get to something quicker. And, that, and that's one thing I teach my patients. The quicker we can get to your health care problem, the easier it's going to be to fix in most cases. So my team of doctors, we have, uh, of course, I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, certified in traumatic brain injury, uh, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author. So we like to get to our patients as quickly as possible. One of the big problems I see is that people wait and wait and wait and wait, and then finally they come see us, and they sometimes want us to perform miracles on one day, and many times we do. But sometimes it's going to take a little longer. The longer you wait, the harder it is to fix the problem. So if you have a health issue, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, uh, sciatica, just come see us. We have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We are here to serve you. And we try it. We've set up four offices to make it as convenient as possible for you. So if you want to get well and stay well, if you're ready to stop suffering needlessly, you can go to our website, drjoe.com, and set up an appointment. We accept almost all insurances. We uh, deal with car accident cases. In fact, I teach doctors, lawyers, uh, physical therapists. I just taught a big seminar last weekend on, on car accidents, how to build a personal injury case, what to do to, stay, to make sure the patient is taken care of from a quality of care standpoint, but also to make sure all the paperwork is filled out, make sure you're following all the rules. Because the insurance companies, it's like a bad relationship. Insurance companies change the rules and don't tell you, and then they expect you to know it. If you don't know it, they get mad at you. And when they get mad at you, they just don't pay their bills. And then you got to fight for it. And that's a pain in the butt. So I teach these doctors and physical therapists and lawyers how to build the case and how to make sure you're avoiding all these little pitfalls. And that's why if you are in a car accident, you want to come see us as quickly as possible. Because not only can I tr uh, tell you you're going to get amazing care, so my doctors are all amazing, but you're also going to have somebody who teaches other doctors how to deal with these things. So if you want to make an appointment with anything, car accidents, neck pain, back pain, digestive issues, nutrition, drjoe.com. You can book it right online or you can call us. We're more than happy to get that set up. The initial visit is normally $720. That's exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, going over the x-rays, and a complete nutritional workup. We've reduced that to $299. So if you're ready to get well, just go to the website, drjoe.com. Book that appointment as quickly as you can because my doctors fill up very quickly. My doctors are very popular. Uh, they're very uh, well-respected. People line up to see them. And so if you want to make an appointment, you want to do that as quickly as possible because you want to make sure you get time to meet with one of the doctors. So drjoe.com is where you want to make appointments. Uh, your fingernails have white lines in them. That could be a sign of kidney disease. Now, if your nails suddenly turn white, uh, the white lines appear on them. That could be a sign of something more serious like kidney or even liver disease. Distinct white streaks and spots on, can point to kidney disease. Uh, ridges create, uh, creating a spoon shape can be a sign of kidney disease. So your fingernails uh, have telltale warning signs of different health issues. And it's important that if you do see these issues that we get them checked out for you. Uh, that if, but if you notice white spots on your nails, you have probably little, little to worry about. It's a normal occurrence. It's just a little calcium buildup. But if you see streaks in it, if this, they start to spoon, uh, like the nails become dished uh, out like, the, like a spoon, uh, this can be signs of something more serious. And again, you want to get that checked as quickly as possible. If you have yellow lumps on your eyelids, you have a higher risk of heart disease. Now, I've seen this many times. I remember as a kid, I had aunts and uncles and the old Italians had these white lumps around their eyes, and I never really thought twice about it. I thought old Italian people had these things. But yellow bumps on the eyelids, uh, uh, they, th this is uh, according to Harvard Research, it's a legitimate reason to worry about your cardiac health. These lumps are actually small deposits of cholesterol, and they're similar to ones that form in your blood vessels and can cause blockages. And so people with these white lumps have 40% more likely to develop heart disease and 51% more likelihood of having a heart attack. 
So if you start to see people, especially older people, I I've never seen it in young people. I've always seen it in old people. But if you start to see those lumps around the eyes, let's get your blood work done. Let's see what we need to do. And, and the good news is that nothing we're talking about here is a death sentence. Everything we're talking about today is warning signs. Something's wrong. Now we can take steps to fix it. And there's multiple ways to treat any disease, of course. There's this traditional medical approach, uh, which sometimes is absolutely necessary, uh, drug, surgery, uh, more radical treatments. There's the holistic approach, which I certainly recommend everybody do, and that's getting the nervous system working properly, making sure you don't have pinched nerves because the nerve supply controls everything. Getting your diet straightened out, which benefits everyone for every disease known to man. And it, it breaks my heart because I see people have conditions and no one teaches them about nutrition. And that's, of course, my job is to take on this job, of the, the burden of the world, and teach you about nutrition. And nobody doesn't benefit, right, double negative there, nobody doesn't benefit from eating a better diet, from taking quality supplements. I take minimum supplements I take every day are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Uh, they're two powders. They taste great. I mix them together, shake it up. I had one with a frozen banana today and a little bit of coconut milk. And I take other supplements as well. I take nitric oxide to increase circulation. Gives me a ton of energy too. I take B-complex just to make sure I have enough B vitamins. I take adrenal support for stress. I take probiotics for digestive issues and health and immunity. I take omega-3 fatty acids for brain function and anti-inflammatory functions. So I customized a, nu a nutrition plan just for me. I take men's hormone support because I'm getting older. And so we can customize a nutrition plan for you. But generally speaking, there's a, like a starter kit, so to speak. And uh, that would be super green, essential source, B-complex, nitric oxide, digestive enzymes. So uh, if you want more information on nutrition, you can go to our website, drjoe.com, and just search whatever you're looking for. Now, if you have any questions, you could send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. And I'm more than happy. Joe and I answer questions literally all day, every day, seven days a week. We're more than happy to answer any questions you might have if, if we can. Sometimes we don't have an answer. Uh, if you're a, a, a podcast junkie, go to your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it is our podcast that we have out in the universe for all the podcast uh, folks out there. And we are more than happy to share our information on our website as well. We have over 2,000 hours of podcasts on our website. I just have to type in what you're looking for in the search bar. Chances are we've done a show on it already. So the website's a great source of information, drjoe.com. You can order supplements through the website. Again, we talked about super green essential source, nitric oxide, things like this. Uh, we'll ship them to you. We ship usually the same day unless it's a weekend. We ship out the, the, that Monday. Uh, we're more than happy to uh, ship to you, or you can come by our offices. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We are more than happy to have you come by and pick up the supplements, and that saves your shipping costs. And we get to meet you, too. That's kind of what our goal is, is to meet you. But you can save money because um, we don't have to charge shipping and everything like that. And then we get to stop by the office and say hi. While you're at the office, why not just make an appointment or just make an appointment, come in and pick up your supplements? Because so many people, and I've been doing this for a long time now, so many people are suffering needlessly. When you come to see us, for whatever their problem is, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, digestive issues, they say, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I wait so long? Why did I suffer for so many years when all we needed was a good chiropractic evaluation and nutrition? So again, the website, drjoe.com. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. What we're talking about today are signs and symptoms that your body is sending you, messages your body is sending you to tell you that there's something wrong. And I got so many of these that we've compiled that I may have to do several shows on it, actually. But these are all fun tidbits that you can look for to say, wow, that's telling me that there's something not right. So if you have chronic heartburn, the most common situation that causes this only situation I know of causes it, is your stomach, which is supposed to sit below your diaphragm, is actually pushed up through your diaphragm. And when the stomach pushes up through the diaphragm, you get something called acid reflux or heartburn. 
Now, over time, what happens is the acid can start to irritate the lower part of your esophagus, and it can actually cause scar tissue to form. And it could even turn cancerous. And that's called Barrett's esophagus. I don't know who Barrett is, but whoever Barrett, he or she is, figured out that when acid gets into that area, it can cause this scarring to occur, and it's called Barrett's esophagus. Now, there is a therapy where they can go in there medically. I, we can't do it at our office. And stretch out and try to break up some of that scar tissue. That's all well and good, but it doesn't treat the cause. The cause is the stomach pushing up through the diaphragm. So... You might want to come see us if you have acid reflux because the number one reason that we see patients is pain, back pain, he headaches, neck pain, uh, shoulder pain, sciatica, car accident injuries, sports injuries. Number one reason we see patients is because of in, uh, pain. The number two reason we see patients is because of digestive issues, heartburn, acid reflux, burping, gas, bloating, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So we're really good at working on that. And the reason I say that is I have acid reflux periodically. So I've trained all my doctors to work on the esophagus, to actually take the stomach and pull it down away from the diaphragm. And it's a very simple, painless adjustment. And we do it all day, every day, I think it's safe to say in our offices. Uh, very, very effective in most cases. Nothing's 100% effective, of course. But we get pretty good results across the board of fixing that. So if you have acid reflux, that's a warning sign. Now, the traditional treatment that's used is we give you medication to neutralize your stomach acid. Well, here's the problem with that. You need stomach acid. You need stomach acid to digest proteins, break down proteins into amino acids. So if, you're not, if you neutralize your stomach acid, now you can't break down your proteins into amino acids until your body is lacking in proteins and amino acids. So that becomes a big, serious issue and a catch-22. Now, if you ever read the directions on the pills that you're taking for stomach or digestive issues, acid reflux, they clearly say don't take for more than, I think, four weeks, six weeks. If you take it more than four to six weeks, you're not able to digest your food properly. And also, one of the key primary defense mechanisms in your body is your stomach acid. You're always sucking down viruses, germs, bacteria, pathogens, and so the stomach acid kills a lot of these things. So if you're neutralizing your stomach acid, you run the risk of not being able to have the strong immune system that you should have. So why would you want to do that, especially if there's a way to fix it? If there's no other way to fix it, folks, I get it. You know, if I get a headache, uh, I'll take some acetaminophen. Then I'll go get a chiropractic adjustment to figure out why I had the headache. But if I'm in pain, I want to get that under control right away. But if you have a way to fix a problem and you don't do it and you keep doing medication, which then gives you side effects and long-term damage, well, that's your fault. A famous man once said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And we've all done things because we didn't understand what we were doing. But with this show and the thousands of hours of other shows I've given you, We've given you so many answers on how to fix things that there really isn't an excuse anymore. We've given you the secrets to get well and stay well in most cases. So if you're not doing it, that's your fault. The shows are on the website, drjoe.com. They're absolutely free. There's over 2,000 hours of podcasts, audio and video. Uh, if you're a podcast junkie, you can go to Dr. Joe, your podcast service and type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. And Dr. Joe, for the health of it, is going to bring you to all our podcasts that we have on our podcast services. So we have tons of information for free available to you. And if you have a health question, send it to us through the website, drjoe.com, and we'll answer it for you. I can't make this any easier for you, folks. So if you're suffering, I'm going to have to put the blame back on you. Because many times we have the answers, not everything, but many times we have the answers. And if you're not following up with it, well, that's your fault. And if you do want to make an appointment to come see us in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love to be your doctors. We would love the opportunity to work with you to try to get the nervous system working properly, the digestive system working properly, and put together a good nutritional plan specifically for you.
So I, I, I don't know what else to do unless I'm going to come to your house, which I'm not going to do. But if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. We accept most insurances. Uh, probably half our patients don't have any insurance. It's extremely affordable to be a patient with us. There's no reason why you shouldn't be making an appointment right now at drjoe.com. You can book it right online or you can call us. Other things, other symptoms that uh, you may have that are telling you something more serious is going on. You crave salty foods. You could have something called Addison's disease. Some people love salty food. But if you find you're suddenly craving anything with salt and you're adding extra salt to your food, it could be a sign of something more serious. The, the adrenal glands, which are little glands that sit on top of your kidneys, that's some of my favorite uh, glands in the body, uh, if there's a deficiency in your adrenal glands, it could be called something called Addison's disease. And it can lead to intense cravings for salt. Now, again, yeah, you like salty foods. I get that. But intense cravings for salt is what we're talking about here. If it's accompanied by muscle fatigue, abdominal pain, and craving for salt, you might want to get your adrenal glands checked because it could be a sign the adrenal glands are pooping out. And if your adrenal glands are pooping out, you say to yourself, well, what do I do about it? Well, there's a supplement I take every day called Dr. Joe's Adrenal Support. Now, the adrenal glands produce adrenaline. They give you energy. They produce anti-inflammatories called prostaglandins, and they produce something called pregnenolone, which becomes your sex hormones. So your adrenal glands are really important. And I take adrenal support every single day as a prophylactic measure. I want to make sure I'm taking care of myself because as I'm getting older, I want to do everything I can to fight the aging process, and I'm doing a darn good job with it. Most people think I'm about 15 or 20 years younger than I am, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And a lot of it has to do with, well, I think all of it has to do with making sure my nervous system is working through chiropractic care, making sure I'm getting a good diet, I eat a good diet, and I take uh, really high-quality supplements, Dr. Joe's supplements. And so there's no reason why you can't be doing that too. I don't have any secret that I'm, I, I'm keeping from you. Normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, good nutrition. There's my secret. And everything I do personally is available to you and your family and friends. So go to the website, drjoe.com, make an appointment. If you have trouble hearing, this could be a sign of kidney problems. Now, if you're having trouble hearing what others are saying, it might not just be your ears that need to be checked. There's a 2010 study published in the American Journal of Kidney Disease Older adults with chronic kidney disease are more likely to have hearing loss than those without. Hearing loss is commonly linked to uh, kidney disease. However, this study suggests a strong tie between kidney disease and hearing loss. So if you're having hearing issues, it wouldn't hurt to get those kidneys checked as well. Why not? And that's what I tell people. When it comes to diagnostic tests, blood work, MRIs, things like this, I have no problem getting you tested. I had a message come to me this morning. Uh, one of our patients, uh, her boyfriend is a patient here. She's a patient here too. And uh, he's having a little radiating pain in the middle of his back. Now, he's only come in for like four or five visits. So I think we're way too early to jump to conclusions. But I said, let's send him out for an MRI. Let's see what's going on. Most of the time, the tests come back negative. So now we know what it's not. And I love to know what it's not because then we can focus on what it is. And I, every day, patients come in our offices, Dr. Joe, I've done this test, this test, this test, and the doctors say, I don't know what it is. I'm stuck. I had a lady the other day with uh, swelling in her ankle and cold feet. And she's had ultrasounds, and she's had vascular tests, and she had nerve conduction velocity tests, and everything came back negative. I said, great. Now we know what it's not. Most likely, it's a pinched nerve in your low back. It's not tumors, it's not cancer, it's not a blood supply issue. It's probably just a pinched nerve in her low back. And she says, I have been having back pain. In fact, the pain started right around my, when my leg started. So she was very happy with the results there because we told her what the problem was. So we always try to get to the cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms. And that's what's unique about our office. Is we, and again, if you need to treat the symptoms, that's great. But we always want to get to the cause of the problem. So I have no problem doing some more diagnostic tests if necessary. So if you do have hard of hearing, hearing issues, wouldn't hurt to get your kidneys checked. And if it comes back negative, great, came back negative. Other symptoms that you may not understand what they mean. Your breath smells sweet. You could have diabetes. And this is something I teach cops a lot, 
is they'll pull somebody over and they, the cop leans in the window and they can smell the person's breath and they say, this person's been drinking, I can smell it. Maybe not. It might be that they're diabetic. If your body doesn't produce enough insulin or isn't working properly, which is what happens in diabetes, your body produces something called ketones. And t- ketones can actually start to build up in your blood. And your body's going to try to get rid of them through your saliva, causing your breath to smell sweet, uh, and sometimes actually like nail polish remover. <clears throat> so this is a, such a reliable sign that in 2014, published in the Journal of Breath Research, found that a breath scent is dependable, non-invasive way to tell if young children have type 1 diabetes. So if you have a child and their breath smells sweet, or acetone is another way to, to, to they'll, di- they'll word it, you definitely want to check for diabetes. I remember I had a patient years and years and years ago when I first started in practice, an older couple, very, very old. And they drove all the way from Rome, Georgia, to Marietta, Georgia, because they wanted to see Dr. Joe. And they were much older. And I remember adjusting her one day, and her breath smelled like she was just boozing it. She just smelled like booze, and I thought, this lady's drunk. And I thought, she doesn't seem like the drinking type. Good, hardcore Christian folks. And I thought, hmm. So I had to remember back when I was in college what that meant. And I said, have you ever been checked for diabetes? And she said, no, I never have. I said, let's get a blood work done for you, and let's see what it was. And sure enough, she was in advanced stage type 2 diabetes, and she had no idea. But the smell on her breath led me to get the diagnostic test, which then, of course, hopefully saved her life. So... Yeah, sweet smell doesn't always mean that somebody's drunk. It could mean that they have diabetes. And especially with children, keep an eye on that. It's a good way to diagnose type 1 diabetes. So, If you have a lump on your collarbone, this could be an early sign of gastric or digestive cancer. Right above your collarbone, near your neck, there's a lymph node called Virchow's node. And oddly enough, this can be a warning sign for your digestive system. When this node swells up, a condition called supraclavicular lymphadenopathy. It may be the first sign of cancer of the stomach, the intestines, or the colon. Once again, we we don't understand exactly why some of these signs are there, but we do know if this sign is there, it correlates with something else. So if you feel a lump on top of your collarbone, once again, just telling you, you might want to go get a check. Now, people ask me a lot, say, Dr. Joe, my hair is thinning. What could it be? Well, it could be that you're getting older. It could be that you're male, male pattern baldness. It's one of the curses we men have to deal with. But it could be you have an iron deficiency. 2013 study in the Journal of Korean Medical Science, lack of iron, which helps your blood move oxygen through your brain and your muscles, might actually cause your hair to fall out. So once again, could be just male pattern baldness. could be that you're getting older. Check your iron levels. You also want to check your thyroid level because hair loss could be due to thyroid issues. So if you want to get that checked, get your blood work done, check your iron, and then also check your thyroid as well. And if those are the cases, wouldn't hurt to get that fixed. So once again, these are warning signs your body is sending you out, telling you that there's something wrong. Here's an interesting one. You laugh or you cry uncontrollably for no reason. It could be a sign that you have multiple sclerosis. It's called pseudobulbar effect, and it's more or less uh, dis- it's distressing uh, and embarrassing. Uh, it's more distressing and embarrassing than just laughing at a bad joke. It occurs in 10% of people with multiple sclerosis, although some research suggests a much larger percentage. Now, this can also happen with traumatic brain injury. Again, I'm certified in treating traumatic brain injury patients, and somebody can be in a car accident, which is the common ones that I see in my offices. And suddenly the person just bursts out, uncontrollable crying, uncontrollable laughter. It doesn't make sense. And you're looking at that person going, my God, they're crazy. Not necessarily. The pseudobulbar effect is telling us that there's been damage to the brain, and the brain is responding in an unnatural way. So uncontrollable laughter, crying, uh, outbursts like that could be a sign of an organic or specific brain injury or brain problem not necessarily the person who's just weird. So once again, look for these things and say, something's wrong. This is a warning sign. I don't want to ignore that. 
And I look at that with every patient that comes in our office. Number one reason we see patients is pain. Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling. Number two reason is digestive issues. Every patient that comes in, I look at the patient as a warning sign. What is this pain telling me? The pain is not the problem. The cause of the pain is the problem. So if I have neck pain, it's not the pain that's a problem. What's causing my neck pain? Is it a ruptured disc? Is it a pinched nerve? Is it a bone out of place, pinching a nerve? Uh, is it inflammation of the facet joints? Is it muscle spasms? So I, we always have to diagnose and try to get to the cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms. We can easily get, get a patient to a medical doctor and get them medications, but that's not going to fix anything. It's going to cover up the symptoms, but it's not going to treat the cause. And I'm not against medication, believe me. But we try to always treat the cause as well as uh, cover up the symptoms if we need to. If we treat the cause, we don't have to cover up the symptoms. And that's the cool part. We get to the cause of your problem. If you have puffy eyes, could be a sign of heart or kidney disease. Now, bags under the eyes, I always think of as adrenal. And the adrenal glands are not technically the kidneys, but they sit right on top of the kidneys. So when I see puffy eyes, it's almost, I always start to think, first thing is an adrenal insufficiency. Are you tired all the time? You have puffy eyes, uh, sex hormone issues, inflammatory issues. We want to get them uh, treated for those adrenal issues. But kidney and heart problems can prevent your body from getting rid of excess fluid, and it can start to build up in unusual places, particularly in the mornings, particularly around the eyes. Although many other things can cause puffiness around the eyes, including lack of sleep, it could be a sign of something more serious, according to the National Kidney Foundation. So most times when I see puffiness under the eyes, I get them on super greens and essential source, which are the minimum supplements everybody should be taking. I'll get them on adrenal support, nitric oxide to increase circulation. And let's give it a few months, and let's see what happens. And in most cases, it, it really, people start to look so much younger when they're taking supplements, good quality supplements. Uh, my German grandfather always said, uh, always buy the best, it's always cheaper. And that's so true with supplements. Now, you don't have to pay too much for things. There are some things that aren't the best that are very expensive, but the best is what I'm looking for, especially when it comes to healthcare. I wouldn't want discount brain surgery. I wouldn't want a discount uh, a doctor removing my appendix. I wouldn't want discount supplements, and I wouldn't want discount chiropractic care either because you get what you pay for. And there's usually a reason why these doctors are working where they are, even some of these big uh, me medical clinics. Uh, there's uh, certain ones out there, insurance companies, but you have to go to their own hospitals. Uh, many times these doctors, they just couldn't get other jobs. And they go there. It's an easy job. They get paid X amount of dollars, and they just have to see patients. You know, They're not going to try to get repeat business because they're not benefiting directly from the patient getting well. And that worries me. I like a uh, little competition in life. I want to make sure that I'm getting somebody who wants my business and somebody's going to do a good job for me, not they're getting paid whether I show up or not. And so just so you understand, uh, I wouldn't take discount when it comes to health care because I don't want discount health care. I want top, top quality health care, the best there is. If your ears hurt after a big meal, this can be a sign of acid reflux. I found this out years ago. I had a patient named Holly. And whenever, her, whenever I adjusted her stomach, her ears would ring because she had acid reflux. Referred pain occurs when an injury or trauma to one part of the body causes another part of the body to hurt. So in this case, the esophagus and the ears are both located along what's something called the vagus nerve, my favorite nerve in the body. So stomach acid can irritate the esophagus, which can cause pain along the vagus nerve, which can show up elsewhere, including in the ears. According to an article in the American Family Physician, you can have gastroesophageal reflux disease without ever feeling heartburn. And one possible symptom of gastroesophageal reflux disease is ear pain. So kind of interesting how everything ties together. And, and I hear this all the time. Patients say to me, Dr. Joe, the way you explain things is that everything is connected. Yes, everything is connected. There's a company, one of the radio stations I work with, and uh, they sell foot inserts. And the sales rep came to me, and they said, would you be willing to endorse this company? And I said, yeah, it's a good company. I like them. I'll, I'd be willing to do an endorsement for them. And she said, well, what would you say about them? 
And I said, I'm going to write you a commercial right now on the spot. And I said, hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Did you know that one-fourth of all the bones in your body are in your feet? And if any one of those bones come out of place, that can cause the knee to shift and the hip to shift and the low back to shift. And everything in your spine can shift because one of the bones in your foot is out of place. It could even cause headaches. She lost her mind, the sales rep. She said, that was the best commercial I've ever heard, especially for a product like this. I said, that's because you got to know your product. And you got to know what you're talking about. And when you have marketing companies writing commercials for something they know nothing about, that worries me. I want somebody who knows the product inside and out writing the commercials. And so same thing when it comes to the body. Everything is connected. And when you understand how everything interacts with everything else, it's a lot easier to get to the cause of the healthcare problem and not just treat the symptoms. And that's what we do in our offices. Sometimes we have to adjust somebody's feet or their knees or their hips or their psoas muscle or their ileocecal valve or their stomach to get to the cause of the problem. Now, we can't promise results for everyone. So don't think if you're going to come in, we're going to guarantee it's going to be fixed. No. But a major, major majority of our patients are extremely happy with the results that they get as patients with us. Because we work on three things. We work on nervous system, making sure we get the nervous system working, unpinching as many nerves as we can. We work on the digestive system. If the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm, like we just said, it could cause your ears to hurt. We can actually take the stomach, physically adjust it, or pull it down away from the diaphragm. When we pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, we physically put the stomach back in the position it needs to be in. Pretty exciting. And then we work on the diet. And the diet is easy because you have to eat anyway. You might as well eat good foods. And we put together a dietary plan for every one of our patients, what to eat, what not to eat. And then we recommend supplements specifically for them. But the minimum supplements I think everybody should be taking, starter kit, would be Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. If you don't get outside a lot in the sun, which is about 20 minutes a day, I'd recommend vitamin D. If you're older than 30, I'd recommend taking a digestive enzyme supplement with every time, every cooked meal you eat. Because cooked foods, when you cook a food, you destroy the enzymes. And the enzymes are the secret missing link to healthcare. So I would recommend the digestive enzymes. B-complex, just as a prophylactic, most people are deficient in B vitamins. It gives you energy, helps the brain work more efficiently. Probiotics, keep the immune system strong. If you're taking medications, if you're getting older, I recommend glutathione. Glutathione helps the liver heal. So you could look at glutathione. And again, these are some of the supplements I take, omega-3 fatty acids for brain function. Every day people ask me, Dr. Joe, how do you do what you do? You've never been stumped, it seems, when it comes to healthcare questions. You get them on the fly. I get stopped all day, every day. Patients stop me in a grocery store. And they say, how do you know all these answers? I said, I take care of my brain. And so if you want to make an appointment, we'd love to have you as a patient. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Stop suffering needlessly. Take that next step. We take most insurances as well and cash patients and car accidents. DrJoe.com. Book your appointment right now. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time.